Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today I want to talk about CB. Uh, God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. CB7, guys. Welcome to CB7. Also known as welcome to the end of an era. Welcome to the end of like listening or like getting help from our CN overlords. We're literally finished, guys. Like we can't copy any more comps. Like we're so freaking donezo. But guys, I did not make it through 24 years of schooling without learning how to play tries even better. And so I've got this bad boy over here. However, we will get into that very, very shortly. And the reason that I don't want to get into it yet is because like a lot has actually fundamentally changed from this one will not just barring like the introduction of Kana as well as like the Ray. I want to talk about like the different tools, the different comps that we'll be able to run when it comes to us. Like the, well, yeah, we pretty much can't run any of this. On top of that, it isn't even for like our CB. You can see like it's missing the 10th one here. But yeah, let me talk about that first. But with that being said, let me run through the bosses real quick. And so guys, a lot of familiar faces. We faced the Wyvern before. We faced the Orc Chief guy and we faced the Unicorn. I think he's got a broken horn, sad boy. However, what you are going to notice is that we have lost Griffin. And so like, I'm really sad because because I was a bird killer. Last CB, I ate chicken and egg sandwich like every freaking day. You know what I mean? It's freaking like a chicken genocide. But either way, let's run through these guys real quick. So we've got this boy over here. Uh, what is it, Lele? So that is what, like um, lightning, lightning. All right, so let's have a quick look at what all of this means. So he actually does magic damage, which is similar to like your Griffin because like they wouldn't just replace Griffin with more like physical damage, right? Anyway, in summary, he does a lot of magical damage, except this time he does a little bit of magic damage to the enemies behind. So that's us, we're the enemy, by the way. But otherwise, Otherwise, you shouldn't be overly worried about this boss because like the stats are gonna match like Griffin's like approximately, you know? And generally speaking, everyone was dumpstering Griffin. So like you guys should be dumpstering this, uh, is, wait, is that an imp? So yeah, you guys should be like dumping Lele anyway. Anyway, moving on, we've got the Orc Chief guy. So you guys just need to remember he does like all of that freaking like physical damage up the front. So typically speaking, you're gonna wanna tank. On top of that, he also does the defense down. So he is gonna like really screw up your front line. But otherwise you can definitely refer back to like previous comps in terms of like what you should run. And so that's actually kind of like the first thing I want to bring up. So any comp that you used to be able to run on any of these bosses, you can 100% reuse them. I'm not going to promise you that they are the best comp at the time. But like what I can say is that if they did work before, you're stronger now. And so they should work again. And so to be honest, that's actually where I started. You know, I saw this, I saw the missing 10th month and I was like, well, crap, what do I start with? And so yeah, before I came across that playlist, I was just looking at a lot of like the previous timelines that we were using for these other bosses. And so it's time to open up those treasure troves and get them. However, However, with that being said, let's move on to the Broken Horn Unicorn guy. All right, so if you guys do remember this guy, essentially what he does is he inflicts magic damage to the unit with the highest physical attack power. And do remember that it actually fluctuates between each character because like some of them have buffs. So for example, Hiori, Kaori, Suzuna. And so it's for these kinds of reasons that you have to actually really, really pay attention to the star levels of whatever comps that they're actually using on the Horn guy. Generally speaking, for all of the other bosses, the star prerequisite or like the star requirements is kind of like so that you can survive those bosses. However, again, on the other hand, for this guy, like you kind of need to match stars. So for example, I remember back like when we versed this guy before, I think the Hiori and the Suzuna needed to be like the same star level because if not, then one of them actually would straight up die. Just like stuff like that, right? All right. And so lastly, we've got like this ugly frog thing. So let me see if I can actually isolate him. Uh, yep, that's good. And so let me translate this bad boy because I can't read Chinese that well. And so Libra. Okay, so we've got here paralysis, stun, restraint caused by the attack from the enemy. In a nutshell, he does a little bit of CC. He does a a little bit of damage. He also does some like like targeted damage. But all in all, he's kind of okay. I would say that he's one of the more mild bosses. He's not like a crippling depression kind of guy. So yeah, as you guys can tell, I wanted to speed run through all of that because there's just so much to talk about this time. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is this bad boy from your boy J6Zs. And so it's essentially saying that there were actually CN modified stats for Libra. So it's like really interesting because like this was trying to like kind of encourage some like magical comps. I don't know if it actually worked because as you guys will see very soon, like we actually have like really, really strong physical teams. But as always, we are going to be limited by the amount of characters that we have or like which characters we have. And I think this time it's actually going to make a pretty big difference. But yeah, I guess your takeaway from this is that if things are not working or if you're doing more damage or less damage than like as expected, then you will understand why. And it's like changes like this, right? And that's not to say that like, you know, Crunchyroll or side games won't do this to us. They might do something that's completely different. And so it would like throw us off like crazy. However, with that being said, let's start talking about the differences, the different kind of tools and like the different characters 
characters that we're actually going to have moving into this CB. And so first of all, what you see here is our lovely lady Tomo. So she is going to be coming on the, oh my God, she's coming tomorrow. Anyway, so Tomo is coming tomorrow. She is like a really, really strong physical DPS. She will actually be dominant for quite a few months all the way up until Muimi. And I think to really put things into perspective, she is stronger than Kari. I think everybody knows by now, like how strong Kari is for CB. And if I say that Tomo is stronger than Kari, then like, yeah, holy moly, right? And so with that being said, I do want to show you guys over here. We do have our clan battle releasing on the 8th, 25th, 25th of August. That gives us about seven days for this boy over here. However, we also have this bad boy over here. And so this is actually really important because the Ironclad Nightmare event gives you the Jun shards. And so like this would get you to like your four star Jun. Generally speaking, it's not really going to like change your damage too much. However, it might actually enable some comps that were previously unavailable to you. I know for me, like my three star Jun has always been a liability to my clan. Like it's always like, oh man, we can't put Lace there because like he's just going to die from it. And so hopefully this actually alleviates that. And so again, we do have seven days to actually farm this out. All right. So let's go back to like how all of this affects CB. So the first thing, again, we have the introduction of Tomo. However, on top of this, we do have like the introduction of the wet cat. So let me just bring her up. You guys already know who she is. She is Summer Tamaki. Da -da 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 I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, so Summer Tamaki, you guys already know who she is. 240 pulls for me. So essentially, she is going to be doing some massive DPS as well as some TP manipulation, which is going to be massive because like it means that like you can probably run more ballsy comps. That is the second thing. However, what I really, really want to mention is what CN has on top of us that actually makes it unviable for us to copy their comps. And so I am over here and I know that this is the 11th month. However, like a lot of these comps should theoretically work for the 10th month as well. But the massive reason as to why we can't use any of these comps is because of this redhead goddess over here. It's your girl Kana. Okay, it's your... Oh, why is that so small? Okay, this one then. It is your girl Kana. She is cute. However, she is a CN exclusive and so we will not be getting her. She is what I would call like a prefez unit that's not a prefez unit, although she really should be labeled a prefez unit. Just a really stacked overloaded kit and so as you can see, she is featured in pretty much every single comp, right? And honestly, there is good reason for that. She is just a really, really strong DPS. However, the second thing that you will notice is that like, wow, we've got a Ray in here. Why? And so what's really interesting about the CB is that for CN, they actually got UE for like that CB. And so that was a lot of acronyms. Let me try again. So essentially, Ray got her unique equipment for the CB, the clan battle that we're about to go into. And if you guys do remember, Ray actually does like some defense down minus 60 at level 100 for like any unit she attacks with her skill one. And so what that means is that we're not going to have Kana as well as not having the UE Ray. So if you guys are doing research, if you are on Billy Billy, like ignore those comps. So like, we literally just can't do any of them. And don't get baited by comps like this because it does look like we could use it, but like technically speaking, Ray is dead weight there. Okay, and so with all of that being said, what exactly should we do then? When I stopped being able to copy homework from one guy, I just asked another guy. And so that's exactly what we're doing. So thank you, CN bros. Thank you for your service. However, it is time to move on to the KR bros. And it's really funny because like the KR videos are uploaded to Billy Billy. So it's not like we're changing like where we're looking anyway. And so what I have here is a whole bunch of comps from KR that are uploaded onto Billy Billy. And essentially this is gonna work for us because they didn't have Kana and I don't think they actually got the Ray UE either. And so this is the playlist that I am gonna share with you guys down in the description below. However, I'm gonna run through each of these because there are some nuances with each of them, right? Especially with the introduction of Tomo, like you start thinking about like, who should I borrow then if she is technically better than Kari? What I'm gonna say is that if you're like me and you're slacking and you're not gonna get Tomo, make sure at least try to get like another Tomo in the guild so you can borrow them for support. Because what that means is that you can start running comps like this. So instead of borrowing Kari, you can borrow the Tomo instead. However, as for me, I don't have Jita, so I'm still dead weight. So I'm really, really sorry to my clan. Anyway, moving on. So we've got B1. However, again, like all of the comps that we have used previously for B1, you can actually use for B1 wool here. So I'm talking like your T1, typically speaking. So uh, this guy over here or this guy over here. These guys are still 100% going to work. They are just not going to do like the maximum amount of damage, especially because of Tomo, right? However, if you guys are straight chilling, this is what I would do. And then like, guys, never forget, never freaking forget the Jun comp. The Jun comp will always work. Where are you, Jun comp? Oh my God, where are you? Should be like the very last one down here. Mm, mint. This comp is always going to work pretty much on like every single freaking boss. Maybe except for like the broken unicorn guy, but like everyone else, okay? But guys, just a quick reminder, when I say T1, I'm talking about this guy over here. And when I say T2, I'm talking about this guy over here. T1, T2, it just stands for Team 1 and Team 2. And for Team 1, typically speaking, Hiyori can be replaced with Susana. And then for Team 2, you've got this guy over here. This can be replaced with Susana, but not Arisa. However, enough about the past. Let's go back to over here and see how like these two like summer time and Tomo's actually shake up the meta. And so as you can see, we've got all of these characters over here with that Tomo potentially replacing that Kari. However, what you will notice that it is a five-star Makoto tanking. I think that 
all star can do it, especially with all of our ranks and all of our levels right now. And to be honest, like with the introduction of the summer cockro, I reckon we can actually even get away with like a three star. Okay, that was a little bit low, but yeah, okay, yeah, it works. It would work. But yeah, try to have like a four star Makoto if you are going to attempt a comp like this. Did you guys see that 75k? What the frick? Look at that. What the frick? Oh my god, man. Uh, Kari can do it as well. Don't discount your girl Kari, okay? All right, moving on. Let's have a look at some of the other comps. So there are going to be like a lot of the similar. Yep. So what did I say? What did I say? There is your T1. And look, it's saying that it is only 10k less than the Tomo variant. This is so reliable. I love this comp, man. I love this comp. I love the Jun comp. You can't go wrong with them, okay? However, with that being said, you guys should know this one back, like the back of your hand. I think that's how the saying goes. That's what I was trying to say. And so let's just move on. Okay, 67k. You know, Kari, almost there. Almost there. But I'm not going to replace you just yet. Okay, so here is a comp where we actually have a Sama Tamaki as well as the Tomo. And this is really interesting because it actually does less damage to B1. And so, like, we want to actually save that summer tamaki to potentially do more damage on like another boss and so like this is actually going to really switch up hit allocations right so like remember at max you're going to be able to use makoto twice you're going to be able to use your own and then you're going to be able to borrow one right your team one is going to have a makoto and probably look something like this if not the previous comp your like actual t1 so i'm talking the one with like the kokoro with the mitsuki and stuff and then your other one could be the jun sarin comp right with like the tp charging like makoto what i'm seeing over here is that this is actually your team two right because it's featuring the Shiori as well as the Makoto. The Shiori, typically speaking, is like going into your like T2. However, like because we're using it up over here, like you're technically using up your T2 here. And so what I would recommend is like sticking with what we know. I would really, really recommend that we're actually going to use the Mitsuki Kokoro comp, you know, the classic T1. Just use this guy, to be honest. I really think that this is a really good comp. And so with that being said, let's move on. Let's have a look at B2, which is going to be really interesting. So I think that means magic. Yeah, this is the magic comp. Okay, so B2 is one of the first places where you can actually put your magic comp and so if we have a quick look over here this is actually a very very familiar comp right you've got the Ilya uh, hopefully she's not going to be able to kill herself here but yeah the Ilya the Akari the Summer Kiaru the Kiaru and the Kyoka and so let me quickly run through this so as always you're going to need that freaking five star Ilya oh man she's getting like Nah, that's not that. That's not close. That's not even close at all. Man, you could probably take two self crits and still be able to get away with it. Nope, that is not true, guys. Do not listen to me. But essentially, remember how I talked about T1 and T2? This is potentially your T3, right? The T1 and T2, generally speaking, you're going to be able to sync them anywhere. However, the magic comps are usually more constrained. So if you do think that you are going to be using a T3 magic comp, remember to sync it into like your B2 or like later on, I think we're going to be able to see her on B5. All right, so yeah, we've got the magic comp on this guy. Let's keep moving on. However, like physical comps are going to be really really dominant especially with the introduction of Tomo. and so as you can see here this is a variation on your t1 right so instead of the kokoro we are actually putting in Tomo. and if i point you guys over to these numbers over here 132 one and then 163 one like that is a difference of 300k damage if you're doing like the magic versus the t1 right however not everybody can run t1s because like some people are gonna have to expend it onto like your boss one right and so if your boss one is dead you could consider actually running your t1 over here however like with a Tomo instead now this is a really interesting scenario because if if you borrow a Tomo, then you can't borrow like a Kari or a Makoto. And so like, let me put me in the shoes of this guy over here. So I probably am not going to get Tomo. If I borrow Tomo here, it means that I've actually used up my Makoto and my Kari. So what that really means is that in my team two, I'm going to have to miss either Makoto or Kari because I can only borrow one of them, right? And so that is like one of the biggest problems that you're going to be running into when we have like these kinds of setups, right? And so that's really why I want to say like, especially if you do not have Tomo, like probably stick with what you know and stick with like the classic T1s and T2s. But with that being said, 163 1.63 mil. That is pretty freaking cracked, my dudes. But yeah, let's move on or else we're going to be here all night. And I can't have that. It's freaking like 12.30 a.m. All right. So this is another interesting one. So we've got a Jita over here. And so for you guys who have Jita, like this is definitely something that you can run with your T1 instead. However, I am a sad boy. I still don't have Jita after like, oh my God, so many freaking rolls. And so all I'm going to say is that look at the difference. 133.1 versus 163.1. So by simply replacing Jita with Tomo, you're gaining 300k in damage, which is freaking massive. But yeah, that's essentially it for boss two. It's pretty straightforward. And so like with that being said, let's move on to boss three. Uh, This is going to be, yeah, here we go. Here we freaking go. So guys, I did mention that like typically speaking, you're going to be wanting to run tanks onto the orc chief boy. What we have now is what we didn't have before. So we have Yukari as well as the summer cockroach. And so like with the summer cockroach, we can actually get away with the five star Makoto. Listen to me carefully. Five star 
Makoto. But yeah, so like using this comp, the constraints of this comp is that it's going to occupy either your T1 or your T2 because it is using up a Makoto. However, on the other hand, you can see like all of these other units, they're not really in those like core, like classic T1s and T2s. So you could technically still run the other one. Or honestly, you could actually run either, just not both. All right. And so moving on, let's have a look. So I think this is the Jun comp. Oh, baby. Okay. It's so close. So close, but so far. Okay. So this is a freaking five star Jun comp. I don't think you actually need five star Jun over here. It's just like, well, this guy's rich. Okay. He's, he's got a lot of money and I wish I was him. But like, essentially, you can use the five star Jun. You can use a three star Jun, I think, because like, especially with the ranks and the levels. But the nuance about this comp is that you'll notice the Jun and the Mitsuki are going to be used up here. And so what this means is that if you are following like the T1, T2, the classic ones, you're going to be using both of those comps in this one comp. You are no longer going to have access to the Jun, like for your T2, and then no longer having access to like your Mitsuki for T1. And so, yeah, I'd be really careful like using comps like this. However, if you remember this, and then if you remember back to like, uh, was it this one over here? This kind of makes it all safe, right? Like if you run that Jun comp that I just showed you, and then this one over here. And so you've actually got like drastically different T1s and T2s. All right, so moving on, as you guys can see, this is probably very, very reminiscent of like your T2. So like we are just replacing the Mitsuki or we're replacing the Saren with the Mitsuki. This one 100% works. However, again, if you run this, you are not going to be able to run that T1 with like the Kokoro one. And so moving on from this one, because we are actually like going to make this a very, very long video. So yep, as you can see, this is your classic boy. So what we are saying here is that we're going to be getting 5k less damage if we'd run it with out the Mitsuki. And so again, all of this is just reinforcing the idea that you should just like run the classic T1 and the classic T2 if you don't want to big brain all of this, right? And so let's move on. I don't think I can go through all of these videos. Holy crap, guys. As actually, I think there's actually like 64 videos or something. So there's another one. So this is going to like kind of looking like it's taking up your T1 and your T2. And so let's just keep going. Um, I can see some magic teams over here. So they definitely are viable. Uh, we've got the Kokoro Tangle. That's an interesting one. It's, it's, it's not that interesting. Like Kokoro heals herself. So it definitely makes sense. Uh, let's see what we've got over here. And so we've got a Shizuru tank. So yeah, definitely would prefer the Kokoro since we're getting like 2k more, I think. Um, this one looks interesting over here. So this one is essentially your Jun comp again. However, it's with a Susana. So remember guys that this is potentially an auto comp. Like this boy pretty much plays itself, like especially with the Shiori. But like, I'm just going to move on. I think we've talked about this comp so much like in these last, like, in this last eight months, in the last year. Okay. So what do we have next? So this is your, I think that was a Tomo. Yeah, okay. And so going through all of these team comps so far, you can see that there's like a new meta being formed, right? It's comps like this, or maybe taking out like a Kaori for a Hiyori instead. But essentially it is your summer Tamaki combined with like the summer Kokoro and it is healing the front line. And so like things are changing guys things are changing a lot. But all right, moving on, let's have a look at what else we've got over here. So that is just like the same thing. Again, remember, Kari comes out, Shiori comes in. It's very, very similar, right? It's just like, this is only really going to be really dependent on like the Samatama key. Because again, the Samatama key is going to TP steal. So if I was to make any more changes to this, I would be like, Shiori comes out for maybe Hiyori instead. Otherwise, maybe Hiyori could come out for Jita instead. But like what you can't do is you can't change the Summer Kokoro, you can't change like the Makoto. And the reason is because because the summer Kokoro is doing two things. She's healing your frontline as well as providing defense down. And then your Makoto is like a second source of massive defense down. However, you could actually replace this Tomo over here. I would say that the Tomo is replaceable by other DPSs as long as they match the star. So I'm talking like Hiyori or Kari five star, right? All right. And so with that being said, let's move on. Uh, I think this is probably exactly what I just said. Nope, it's not. Wait, it actually kind of is. Yeah. So see, as you can see, we have replaced the Shiori with a Mimi and we have replaced the Tomo with a Kari. It always comes back to the same principle guys like you got two dps you got two defense down and in this case you've actually got a summer tamaki manipulating tp special case over here we've got the summer kokoro who is actually healing your front line and so yeah this is going to be kind of like one of your new staples uh potentially like another t1 but yeah anyway moving on so this one's eight minutes long it says like three knives so this is actually going to introduce three different comps so we've got that one over here we've got next, yeah, this boy over here. So this is an interesting one. And the reason that this is interesting is because it's running so many DPSs. However, like all of these DPSs, most people should have. It is not featuring the summon Tamaki. It is not featuring like the Tomo. And so like, this is something that everyone could run technically. But remember guys, B4 is where like the stars actually matter. So like try to at least match the stars. So with that being said, let's move on. Let's have a look. All right, guys. So this one over here, another one where we have all of the different characters where everyone should have, except maybe the summon Kokoro, if you guys did start like later than that. And so if I look at the numbers over here, 153k versus 164 
honestly, I would take that, right? However, if you guys are at like the highest level of play, I'm talking like T10, T25, these 100Ks, they are, they are gonna matter, right? If even say like 10 people don't have Tomo, for example, and you can't run like this 164K one, then you've already lost like 100K times six, so that's what, like 600K, right? 600K, and then if you do that like every single freaking lap, like it's gonna look really, really bad really fast. And so what I just noticed over there, guys, you guys see how unbelievably low some of these characters get. So this um, this Erico is about to get chunked really, really hard. I would say that like the star requirements for this boss is really, really insane to be honest. So yeah, if it were me, especially for boss four, I'd probably run one of the safer comps. So if you guys aren't really at like the late game yet, I think it's this one over here. So it's the one with the Nozomi taunt. Yeah, this boy over here. So this is actually what I used last time just because like we weren't strong enough to do anything else. And so the idea behind this one is very simple. Essentially like every time the horse tries to like horn one of your people, you're going to actually use the Nozomi UB before it so that she can actually taunt and take that horn. So let me just like scroll through really quick. And so, yep, you've got the Nozomi UB there. And then the, so he's about to go real horny for like the Nozomi. Yep. And so as you can see, Nozomi pretty much takes all the damage. It doesn't really do much. However, what you guys are going to notice is that the numbers, the DPS, it's going to be significantly decreased from like the other ones where you can run like no tank, right? But to be honest, if you're running one of these guys over here, like you're probably in like end game, you're probably in like a pretty established, like high ranking clan. All right. So let me have a quick look at some of these ones. I think this one is a Jun one. Uh, this one. Yep. So we've got a Jun one over here as well as a Tamaki, which is nice because we've got some TP scaling, TP stealing, sorry, TP stealing because like the TP doesn't and scale aside from level. And so moving on, what do we have over here? This one looks interesting. We, yeah, we got the double cat. I freaking knew it. This one is pretty mint. This one is pretty freaking mint, guys. And remember that you can replace this Jita with another damage dealer to like kind of get the same outcome. But like really the core units for this one is like these two Tamakis over here, as well as this Samakokoro, as well as the Makoto, because you do need that second defense down. However, with that being said, let's move on to B5. Oh my God, this is going to be a really long video. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, so B5 is essentially like you've got your Mitsuki comps, you've got your Mitsuki comp over here as well. So, okay, here we go. Here comes the INS. This is really, really interesting. So this boss is actually really annoying. He does a lot of debuffs, a lot of like really, really annoying things. And essentially the role of Ayana is to like disrupt a lot of it so that you can maintain your DPS, but also like to like have the survivability to actually go through the entire way. So you're going to see she's going to like, well, he, sorry, he, oh, let me not assume his gender. He's going to do something. And then Ayana is going to, okay, that wasn't it. Okay. It's coming. It's coming, guys. I swear to God, it's coming. Okay. There. There. It was, it was that one. Yep. It was that one. So yeah, as you guys can see, the core units for this one is the Iron Air. It is the Makoto and the Mitsuki for the two times defense down. And as for the Tomo, to be honest, you could replace with any other physical DPS. I'm talking about like Hiyori. You could probably replace the Kari with the Hiyori as well. But like, remember guys, like the Iron Air is like the biggest part of this strategy. Generally speaking, I'm pretty sure you can run the Iron Air like three instead of the Iron Air five and it'll still work. I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can still run Iron Air three. If I remember correctly, I've like, I've watched so many of these freaking videos, my guys. But all right, let's move on. On. What is this one over here? So yeah, there's an INF4, but like same idea, right? Same idea. However, we've got a healer, Summer Cocker on the end over here. And just running through a couple more. So this is like your Mitsuki with the Summer Tamaki and then the INF as well. So this is going to do a little bit less damage, especially because like we've lost like one pure damage dealer. But yeah, it's still 143 one, which is pretty freaking good. But yeah. Oh my God, guys. Okay. Honestly, I should really, really wrap up this video because it's already run for so freaking long. But like you guys can go through this playlist. This is essentially like all of the different tools that you can definitely use. So like, look at this boy over here. This is an interesting one. We've got a double archer setup with the double defense down over here. But what you guys are going to notice is that we are using Ayane as much as possible on this boss, especially for pre and rage. Okay. Now, the last thing I do want to show you guys is that there are magic comps that are featured in this one. So as you can see, it's still Ayane. Ayana is still the queen, okay? So essentially, this is like your magic comp. However, again, I do want to say that magic comps, they just don't really perform well on like all of these CBs. And what I'm really trying to say with that is like where you can try to put your magic comps into other places, or maybe even try to get like through your B5s with your physical teams, right? Because as you can see over here, this is the pre enraged boss. It's going to do 93.1. And if I come down over here, you're going to see there are a couple more that are going to only do 112 and 94. And these ones are post enraged. However, these ones are also post enraged, but they are physical DPS. And so if you are running like your magical teams, I really would recommend putting them somewhere else, uh, especially like your B2. 
um, this guy over here. You can see 132 one, and without Tomo, the best next comp is like 133 one. And then on top of that, we've also got the next one down here. So as you can see, B3, it goes from like 130 to 100 or 98, right? But yeah, at least this is not like a drastic drop in DPS, right? So like this guy over here, it comes from like 154 to 143 down to freaking 94 or 112, right? On the other hand, if we look up here, we've got 161, we've got 154, 143 coming down to freaking, uh, where, wait, where did it go? Down to 93, right? And like, obviously you can't like avoid all of these situations for everybody, but like, it's just so much DPS loss. So like you're potentially losing up to 600K damage if you do like bad hit allocations. And so, yeah, I think I covered like everything I really wanted to talk about for this video. And I'm so sorry that it went so freaking long, but this is like a major, major turning point for us. Like we don't have the Kana, we don't have the Ray UE. When we do get the Ray UE, maybe we can start copying CN a little bit more. But yeah, for now we are going to be copying, ooh, JP bros. Looks like we're copying KR and JP bros at this point. But yeah, hopefully I went through enough of these comps for you guys to kind of gauge like what the classic ones look like and what the new ones look like. The classic ones still are definitely going to work. Like you guys just need to trial them. I guarantee you guys they are going to work. But if you guys are looking at like the new teams, like the new T1s, the new T2s. So I'm talking like the Summer Tamaki, Summer Kokoro combos. I'm talking like the Double Tamaki combos. I'm talking like the Jun and the Mitsuki combos. There is like just so much more variety now. Like so like your T1 and T2 are going to feature Makoto. However, what you're going to do is you're going to strip away the Jun from T2 and then you're going to put it into T3 with a Mitsuki. So what that means is that you're going to spread out like your physical defense down across like three teams and hopefully make that work. Three physical teams, like you definitely can get away with that in the CV. If anything, it's probably recommended to actually go with three physical teams. But with all of that being said, we are crossing, oh my God, we are going really, really over time. And so let's start wrapping this bad boy up. And so guys, I want to leave you guys with a secret message and that is... Thanks CM bros, because I do want to express my thanks to the CM bros for actually like, you know, putting together all of these like crazy resources. However, it is our time to depart. We must move on. We, I wish we got Kana, man. She's so cute. But yeah, like I said, like we must move on. And so like, if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it because it lets me know that you've actually watched up until the end of the video. And so for that, thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. And if you guys don't have the notification bell switched on, switch it on. Otherwise, come join the Discord. And if you guys do want to support the channel, we do have a couple of ways down in the description below. We've got a, like a membership thing. But as Tomo once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll Catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.